Welcome back to the channel. Today is Friday. Um, it's about 10 a.m. right now, race day. I have unfortunate news though. I just got a text from Josh saying his car unfortunately will not be able to make it. Um, he got his car back later than he was expecting from fabrication, which it happens. And he was up till I think four or five last night trying to tune his car, get his car ready for race day today. And unfortunately at 4 a.m. he called it quits. He was running into some issues. Uh, one of the issues was with his Haltech that he is running in there, I believe. Um, he switched it over to a K-Pro and was running into a different issue um, on K-Pro. So unfortunately, it's not worth the rush to try to get it done and possibly miss something for just a race day. If it was a bigger event, maybe, but it's just a test and tune. It's not like a, any competition or anything like that. So unfortunately, he's not gonna be able to make it. And unfortunately for me, I will not be going either. This was supposed to be my first track event and it doesn't feel right going without Josh um, and the team. So I could take this car, I guess, by myself or with my buddies still, but it just doesn't, it doesn't feel right to go without Josh and the team, um, especially for my first track event. If I've had a couple events, um, race days under my belt, it'd be probably a different story then, but it just doesn't make sense for me to go without them. It is very unfortunate and I am very bummed out. I can't express how excited I have been to have my first track event. I haven't even touched this car or turned over the car in two weeks now after we tuned it because I was so scared if I were to drive it, something would happen causing me not to miss, uh, not to make race day. So I haven't turned over the car or anything just because I knew it was ready and it was tuned, ready, nothing was wrong for track day. It, it, it's, it's quite shitty. Um, the whole reason I built my STI was to go racing and it's been two years now and I still haven't been able to race that car. And since this is the second to last track event, um, the last one being on the 24th and the 25th, it's a two day event, I'm leaving for Tennessee. Um, so the STI wouldn't be able to make it then either. Possibly I could bring the Honda out on the 24th, maybe just for one day. Um, it just doesn't make sense though. I'll have to see how far along I am with the STI. I could have to make sure that car is ready for the slammed enough event down in Tennessee. Every, it seems like every time um, I have my have a car together, something always happens. It's always when I'm involved, I feel like I'm bad luck. Um, every time I'm involved, either my car does not, uh, something breaks, something happens where my car can't make it. This time though, my car is running and it's someone else. So it's always when I'm involved, it seems like one person isn't always able to make it. So it is unfortunate, I am very bummed out, but life is life. I am gonna go head over to Josh's shop right now, see if I can help him figure out what, uh, I think he's having a vacuum leak right now. See if we can try to figure that out, um, get that car sorted so in the future we can get that car racing. I do have, um, we call it our community trailer, all our buddies, Morford, Josh Morford, our good friend, owns this trailer, but we all use it when we need it, so. I'm gonna go drop the trailer off at Josh's. That's where we store it. And hang out with Josh and see what's going on. Now that this car is more than likely not going to see the track this year, I don't care about not driving it to, I don't care about preserving the motor for race day. So let me know if you guys would like to see some videos of some street hits and stuff like that. Obviously, we'll be going down to Mexico for that. But now that this car isn't going racing this year, I don't care if something were to happen because now that it's off season, I have time to pull it apart, fix stuff, and do the build I've been wanting to do anyway. So drop a comment what you guys like me to do with this car, whether that's line up with Josh and his Honda or some other people. Just let me know what you guys would like to see with the Honda now that we are not heading to the track. Also with the Honda, um, I completely forgot that on our Dino Day, when we um, the last Dino Day video, um, I was using Josh's wideband because all of mine kept taking a shit. 
So I was using Josh's wideband and he needed it back because it's his dyno one because uh, he was tuning customer cars. So last night I forgot that I didn't have a wideband for the Honda and um, AutoZone actually carries the wideband for it, which is kind of weird to me and it's a fractional cost. I think it's like $100 online, but you can get the same one at AutoZone for 50 bucks and it has a lifetime warranty so if it breaks you just go into your local auto zone get a brand new one same day it is also funny um i asked for two they gave me two on the counter but they only rang me up for one so i got two for the cost of one which is not bad at all if you guys are wanting to pick one of these wideband sensors up at your local auto zone there is the part number for you guys we just got the truck warmed up. We are now going to be heading to Josh's, dropping off the trailer, and seeing what's going on with this Honda. <laughs> you hear that? Well, <laughs> I think we found our... <laughs> that's a, that's how I'm feeling right now. I'm crying to a whipper. <laughs> got our own siren. <laughs> it is now currently two. We just figured out the issue and fixed it on Josh's car. The throttle body, um, two of the bolts were longer the rookie uh, than they should be. So they were bottoming out when we thought they were tight, but there was still a gap. So we replaced it with the proper bolts. We just did the pressure test on it, no leaks. So we're ready to start this up. All these bolts, oh, they all work. Find all these bolts, yeah, you should have fucking found the right ones, bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's his fault, don't listen to Two plus two, not knowing what the fucking hell is. RBR, this is fucking BBR. I don't have no association with this car. I can't believe I just started the Honda and I thought it sounded a little bit different and that is because I forgot to put in my new wideband sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in, pull the car out. I haven't started this car in two weeks. Uh, I'm probably gonna go driving out tonight uh, with Josh. His black car is now running fine. He just has his base map on there because obviously when he was tuning it, he wasn't able to properly tune it with a big old leak. So it was a vacuum leak. Um, it was ended up being the throttle body on his Honda. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, Two of the bolts were the wrong size, they were too big, so when he was threading them in, when he thought they were tight, it was just bottoming out and it wasn't actually tight. So we got that fixed up, we went and did his alignment, I'm now going to throw in that wideband, pull the car out, get a nice thumbnail, and then probably, hopefully, go out driving tonight and probably do some street hits. The woo Haha. <laughs> Where'd you get? So I ordered my new, or I got my new turbo in as you guys saw in the dyno prep video i like i mentioned the car has to go off to ranch built because it needs to get a whole new turbo kit made for i am doing a headlight mount turbo kit the turbo kit i had before is a it was from a smaller turbo so i needed to order um some bigger flanges i overnighted those from real street performance now ranch built has everything they need to get the turbo kit made I think the game plan is I'm going to run the slicks tonight. I don't know what type of uh, trouble I'll be getting into, but it'll be, it'll be nice to have the slicks and I can break them in. They are brand new, so can't hurt. I do need to go ahead and torque all four wheels down because I never torqued them when I was adjusting the suspension. So I'll go ahead and torque those down. Look how mean this looks from the front. <laughs> I'd shit myself if I saw that uh, pulling up behind me. That's crazy. So I think the game plan, I think about eight o'clock tonight, Josh is going to be going out cruising. I will be joining him. We always stop at the car meet first, say hello to everyone, and then we always go do a couple hits down in Mexico. We'll see what happens tonight. The car is now all ready for cruising tonight. Off camera, I went ahead, torqued all the wheels down. I didn't have them torqued before because I was 
taking him on and off wasn't worthwhile torquing him. So I got those torqued down all the way. I put the wide band in and I also adjusted this down pipe. I, if you guys recall, it was sitting down here. I finally have it adjusted so it looks so much cleaner. Uh, the reason it was and uh, lined up and even is I've taken this turbo off so many times and I just, the down pipe and never adjusted it because never knew what its final position was going to be. So I finally have that readjusted. It's gonna look a lot better. The car is looking really good. Very, very aggressive front end. I did also go ahead and throw an extra spare brand new wideband in the back along with the 22 uh, mil wrench. Uh, also a 13 mil wrench and 11 mil wrench. In case I blow charge pipe off, that's a 11 mil. Anything exhaust wise, other stuff is a 13 mil. So I have some tools in case something were to happen, I can hopefully fix it on the road. Uh, it might just be your overfull or overflow. Yeah. yeah. Head flipping. Oh, really? Ah. Where's my camera at? Yeah. She gonna make temperature? Well, I hope I was uh, captured on camera good. I heard a weird noise and Bo got outside the car. It is, that's all coolant. Right, you wanna shine a flashlight here? It is, it's hard to tell, it's very dark. Uh, lifted head though, which is, I don't know, that's kind of unexpected I guess. These do have head studs. I don't know what head studs are in it, but it did not like that launch I just did. So, we're probably gonna take it easy on her for tonight, bring her back home, and diagnose it from there. Well, we just got back to the house. The car made it back. So, I don't think it is a cracked sleeve. I do think it just lifted a head. I don't think we would have been able to make it back. I did hear a weird metal um, internal motor, motor noise. So, I'm not quite sure what that is. I am going to 
uh, go ahead and pull the coil pack, spark plugs, do a com compression test, and that'll give me an indicator if the, if the sleeves are cracked or not, or maybe it's just low compression to begin with right now. That'll kind of give me an indicator of where to go next. After a long night, we are now enjoying enjoying some nice beer after a long night of driving and potentially blown up K20. I don't really care if it is blown up. I prefer if it was blown up, but we're going to do a compression test and see. If not, if it did lift a head, we're going to go ahead and pull the head off. Not in today's video, but we're going to replace the head gasket and fix the valve seal gasket because it is leaking. In that case, then the car will be all 100% proper because I have had that oil leak since I've had the car. So that'd be nice to fix that. Singed. <laughs> Oiled. <laughs> 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 Fuck. That's hot. Grab the spark plug, oh, damn it. That's hot. What? <laughs> Hell yeah. No, you're good. I, uh, 150. <laughs> I was just trying to tell you to stop without moving my hands. Cylinder one, good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 150. No Two cylinders are good. <laughs> Let's see how this third one is. Off to a good start. One fifty. No way. <laughs> no fucking way. I'm amazed. Let's see how the last cylinder is. Um, there's no way this should still have solid compression. This motor has been so abused. I guess we'll see how this last cylinder is. Yep. One fifty. motor won't fucking die. <laughs> I'm, as you guys can tell, a little bit speechless right now. Uh, 150 all across. Was not expecting that at all. This motor has, like I mentioned, has been <laughs> absolutely abused and you guys have seen as well. Because um, I don't care if this motor blows, so I've been driving a little bit harsh. And it's still fucking living. So, so that's uh, cleared up the cracked sleeve. Um, theory I had. So it is just looking like a lifted head. So I'll go ahead and get a new head gasket ordered and valve seal and we'll get this running again. Well, I think that's going to be it for today's video. We just did the compression test, 150 on the dot all across, which I'm, I don't know, I don't, I don't have words. I'm amazed this motor is still living. So looks like it was just a lifted head. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and order some ARP 625s. I think there are 2000s in here right now, which aren't gonna be strong enough where we're trying to go. So I think I'm gonna order some 625s and get the Speed Factory head gasket ordered for this car, get it all redone, and 
party some more. I think um, the last track event is the 24th um, and 25th. It's a two-day event. I'm not quite sure if I'll be able to make it. I do leave the 25th for Tennessee. That's a long drive. I have to make sure I'm ready for that. But in the off chance that I will be able to race, um, it'd just be the 24th. This car will be ready and it should make some power. It was hooking really good with the slicks on the street. I do think the clutch is uh, slipping though. Um, you can kind of hear it in some of the clips. So I might go ahead and order either an Exotti Twin or a Triple. I'm not quite sure which one I want to go with yet and pull the motor um, and re um, put the new clutch on it. Not quite sure if I'll do that quite yet. Most definitely gonna order some new head studs and get a new gasket and valve cover gasket to get this car back on the road. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.